Welcome to the I'm Book Podcast. I'm April O'Leary, and this is the YouTube version of our podcast. To get the audio version, you can hop on over to Spotify or anywhere that you consume audio podcasts. We are going to jump into some really cool content, so stay tuned for our next guest. We look forward to connecting with you, and be sure to subscribe. And to start your author adventure, hop on over to O'LearyPublishing.com, where you can map out the entire process and see what writing a book would look like for you. Let's get started. Welcome back to the I'm Booked podcast. I'm April O'Leary, and I'm excited. You just heard a lot about Nathaniel John Getz, author of The Wonders of You, who is on with us today. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. So glad you're here. And we had the pleasure of publishing this amazing book, The Wonders of You, Understanding Your Unique Energy. And I want to talk all about how you uh, came to write this book. I know I know your story, but everyone listening does not know your story yet. And I think it's so neat how you have encapsulated the message in your book. So let's talk a little bit about the history of where The Wonders of You came from. Would you well, like to dive can. in there? If we yes. want to start talking a little bit about your dad and how you guys crystallized your message and all of that, because I think the important thing is that most authors get their ideas from their experience and you have a vast experience in this area. So tell us about it. Mm -hmm. We had years of developing human relations skills in the field of sales and marketing and around a lot of people. My dad was a minister, so there's a lot of human relation things there too. But we came to a point that we just found out that there had to be more. There had to be an easier way to understand who people were and the type of behavior that you could expect, why they act or react the way they did. One thing that we discovered a lot is the question. We wanted to answer the question, why within a gender, two women could be so different. Um, my, my dad, uh, he read this book. It was really big at the time um, about men and women and how they were so different. And this one book was Samson and Delilah. And the premise was that women were like Delilah and men were like Samson. Well, he shut the book and said, I'm like Delilah. Uh, my wife is Samson. So, the, so that whole that whole vein of study, uh, we just found out that it just wasn't complete. Uh, yes, there are some gender differences, but it didn't really answer the question why my dad and I as two men or my mom and someone else as two women were so different within the genders. And so we went on a quest to find that out. And, and we found out that because of the energy flow, and the concept that um, energy flows either in an up and down manner, and in people logics, we call them starters, or a linear manner, and in people logics, we call them finishers. And so it's all designed with, for a balance of nature. And, you know, ideally, you would, you would want the two energies complementing each other. And so my dad and I, for example, quite different people totally but the way it's designed is for us to to work together and complete each other and and that's kind of how the book happened is because you know I, I found out I can only be in one place at one time and my dad had these amazing ideas and vision but he needed someone like me to refine and capsulize the thoughts and that's where the book came in you know I would I'm only able to be at one place at one time. And, you know, it's it's such a value. I had no idea books were so valuable and the the amount of wisdom insight that are in there, uh, it, you know, people can do at their own pace. So what they'll discover is that, aha, this is why my significant other acts and reacts the way they do and why <laughs> him and I or her and I are so opposite, yet we... We, we are so attracted to each other, you know, it's just the natural attraction of the energies uh, come together. So that's, that's a little bit how it got started. 
So it's funny because uh, I'm a glutton for personality tests and I know my Enneagram number and I know my Myers-Briggs combination. And so when we got together and started talking about the starters and the finishers, it was really interesting because it brings it into a very simple um, way of viewing people that makes a lot of sense. And, you know, as we were working with the material and you had done a lot of work, you know, prior to coming to us with this um, book in mind, uh, I, I never quite, you know, unlocked some of the things that you taught me. And you've told me since, and I know it's true that I'm a starter. <laughs> <laughs> and I know for sure my husband's a finisher. And so it's funny because I used to always joke. I said, if I would have married someone like myself, we would have killed each other. Mm -hmm. Too <laughs> you much know, of a good thing. And I, yeah, and I think there would have just been because it's it would be too much of the up and down energy, as you say, you know, whereas like if he would have married someone like himself, you know, they would have been out on the patio reading a book probably most of the time. Although I think he might be happy with that. I've said to him, I said, maybe you'd be happy if you didn't have a starter, you know, for a wife, but I think the compliment works really well. And so what, as you, um, you know, you came to us, you had your book and uh, we kind of went through the process of how to put this book together in a way that was the most accessible for readers and to serve uh, your goals of building your brand people logics. And so let's talk a bit about that process of writing uh, working with the editorial team and how you were able to get your book down into the format because it wasn't the easiest process. I mean, I think that <laughs> some people take book writing for granted, like they could just, you know, some people are natural writers. Some people look at authors and say, there's no possible way I could ever do that. And then there's people like you who really know what your strengths are, and then you're willing to help other people help you to get across the finish line, which is really smart. So tell us how it was for you to work in the editorial process. Well, first of all, having a starter publisher is key. <laughs> for sure. And then the, yeah, the editorial process, it, it probably is different because I had such distinct conviction how every word should flow. And, you know, this is People One on One, So this is like the foundation of study so it was very important to to know and then it was good to know in editing and in the process of writing who you're working with so once you know that uh cat is a finisher and working with her then it was so much help more helpful to know the kind of questions that she was asking and why is this in here and you know it is kind of good to go through this refining process and having high quality people like you have on your staff I mean they're 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 excellent to work with but you know it, it is it's back to that statement together we're more and mm -hmm. you know I brought to the table years of experience and research but I didn't have the skills of of editing and refining messaging and you know in a in a really good flow like for example we on purpose made it uh, 12 chapters for for like a 12-week study or a course or those kind of things so laying it out and having the skills uh to do all those things is where you know why why it was a pleasure working with you and your team because um there's only you just can't be an expert at everything so uh yeah it was a but great i want to be <laughs> <laughs> and you know i i think that uh Nathaniel is a great example of someone who has a lot of stick to itiveness, you know, a really a determination to carry the vision that he he and his father had through to the finish line. And that's something that we often see is that, you know, the idea, it's like joining a gym and the idea of getting in shape is great until you got to get up every morning, work out, watch what you eat. And then it seems like, ah, I don't really care about it that much. Right. But <laughs> And then we, we kind of give up on the goal and you had a goal from the start, from our very first meeting, you knew what the vision was and what you wanted and come hell or high water, this was going to happen. So I think that that's something that in the process of going from, you know, idea to publish book, 
for anyone out there who's writing a book or thinking about it. It's not a linear path. It's not this straight, you know, I can get up every morning and have, you know, same consistent energy every single day. It's like, sometimes you're pushing on the gas pedal and sometimes you got to take a breather. Sometimes you got to regroup and um, shift who you're working with and how you're working and in what manner you're working. And so I think that, you know, your um, ability to stick to the vision and to, be flexible in the process was really key to getting the book done. And I think that that's, you know, speaks volumes for the book um, and what you're doing. So kudos to you. Now, I want to start with, you know, giving people just a taste of what's in the book because it's such a valuable book, um, but I don't want to give them everything because they need to purchase it. And the book is called The Wonders of You, just a reminder, and Understanding Your Unique Energy. So chapter one, is called How Energy Flows. And you talked a little bit about it earlier that starter energy goes up and down and finisher energy is linear. But tell us a little bit more about the traits and how someone would know. And I know you have some resources available on your website. So share that as well, if you would. Yes, uh, starters are usually the ones that are the most friendly, the most outgoing, the most uh, connected with people they really thrive in a social environment and uh, they're very good at captivating attention they're usually the ones that if somebody's casting a vision uh, it's usually the starter and they they see the big picture but they need finishers to come along and and um, do the spreadsheet on the computer and <laughs> and pay the bill <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> somebody's got to count the, the, the profit and loss and you know they need that and they you know the starters are just better at being up front and 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 leading a team uh, finishers are just really good at being consistent and methodical like for example we went through all kinds of emotions uh getting this book published but you know having that linear energy they're just they're very, uh, they're, they're just much better to stay with something for a long period of time. Like I like to say, once you get on a finisher's list, it's hard to get off. And, <laughs> and so, and with this, this book was a years of making. So um, yeah, yeah, starters. And the main thing is, is for starters that I find is getting a hold of the concept and then learning to go find your finisher. It's very mm -hmm. specific. Uh, and it, so this book will help you understand why it's so valuable, how to identify them. And then, uh, you know, I was meeting with the contractor the other day and, and I, you know, once it's just in you, once you have this, it's so good for humanity. And, and, but he, he wasn't really sure what to do because he's a starter. So he was doing 28 different things. And so I had, to, I had a <laughs> conversation with him and, uh, so at the end of the day, he said, yes, I need to go find my finisher. And, and so we, we have it all lined up now. So a coaching session, you know, is, is very valuable <laughs> to speed up the process. And, you know, I was talking to his son about these things and, you know, the main thing is this isn't common knowledge. And, um, he, he was like, wow, I wish that, um, somebody would have talked to me about this when I was 22. And um, one thing I noticed, though, is finishers do not buy into quickly uh, to a new idea. It takes a little longer. We have to plow ground a little more to get finishers to understand uh, who starters are. And they're Which not is also frustrating for starters because we're like already decided and on to the next thing. It's like catch up already. <laughs> <laughs> and loosen up a bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. But it's good for starters to understand that sometimes the qualities of wanting to rush ahead can be detrimental. And I've noticed that with myself is that, you know, my husband's a finisher and he likes to look at all the options. He likes to think about everything. He's very deliberate about when he chooses something. And then when he chooses it, it's with a lot of thought. And so therefore he is happy with his choice and he can stick with it for a long time. Or I'll try something at times. And then 
you know, because I haven't surveyed all options because it's boring and I don't really want to do that and it takes too long. And then I just plow ahead and then I'm like, wait a second, that's not exactly what I wanted. And then you're like back at the start and then you like find some other options and then you go. So it's sort of like going this and then going back a little bit. So uh, it's good. I can see where, you know, both energies are valuable. It's understanding how to um, work with each other without frustration. And that's part of what's in your book here too. It's resolving conflict and relationships. That's mm -hmm. chapter seven. And um, I think probably that would be one of the conflicts. What are some of the other conflicts and relationships that happen? The big thing is about time. Time. Uh, starters get so into what they're doing they can run late on a regular basis and finishers like to show up early. And so typically, and so there's this, this conflict. The other thing is about starters need a very, they need a safe place to talk uh, where starters talk to hear themselves think finishers usually think, and then they talk more. And so the tip would be for a finisher is, Provide a safe place for a starter to talk about their ideas, but don't buy into it as a done deal until they've processed it for a while. And so that's that's a big conflict because finishers many times will say to a starter, well, you said, I heard you said, this is exactly what you said, but they don't really and have not been trained to understand that starters need to talk to hear themselves think. And so that is huge when you can get to the place that you can let a starter develop their ideas and refine their ideas and then help them implement once we even know that this is actually a good idea. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's interesting hearing you say that because we all view life through our own lens, right? So I view my life through the starter lens. And so a finisher, take my husband, for example, is that if his trait of, as a finisher is he talks once he's thought it all the way through, then he's expecting other people are, are operating on that same way. That mm -hmm. when they're talking, they've already thought everything through because that's the way he does it. Where, yeah, a starter is like, I just need to dump all of this. And then basically I'll forget I even said 90% of it tomorrow anyways. So <laughs> just give me a chance to just to you know, dump it all out. Cause I'll figure out what 10% I actually do want to take action on or move forward with. So, um, so what, what about, um, the emotional energy of starters and finishers? Well, starters are the all in people. <laughs> they show up and you get either all of them or none of them. Most of the time they're, they're zero to a hundred quick and they're a hundred to zero quick. <laughs> <laughs> and so you want to know if as a finisher, if you're trying to accomplish something, you, you, when you, once you get their attention, you want to have, you want to be really focused and capture that energy because as much as they can go up and get really high and creative and tap into, to all those things and just focus so much energy and go on, uh, we like to say, go on the attack mode and mm -hmm. get it done. And, um, uh, it where finishers are more, more methodical typically, but the, the tip would be to, once you have a starter's attention, utilize it quick and, and, and get them all in and, and keep them, keep them engaged as much as possible and get it done as fast as possible uh, for a starter. Like I say in my book is like, it, it, I had told people, for years, yes, I, we need a book, you know, because <laughs> there's only so much energy that you have, and you can't say the same story over and over hundreds and hundreds of times a day, obviously. And so I lost a bunch of starters along the way because they'd be in, and I would be still in the research and development and taking my time mode, and they, they would be in and gone. You know, like mm -hmm. that's never going to happen, but we have the evidence that it did happen. Mm hmm. Way to go, finisher. See, finishers yes. make it happen. But, you know, it's it's funny that you say that, too, because the um, the energy of a starter and, you know, the energy of a finisher being vastly different. I, I struggle with this in in personal relationships and business is when people don't get to the point quick enough. If their story is too long and drawn out, 
and then they're rabbit trailing over here and then they're over here and then there'll be sometimes I'll be like I don't know what we're talking about <laughs> I'll say that like I don't even know what we're talking about can you get to the point can you tell me what you're telling me you know it's so it's hard for me to relax at times to just go with the flow and just listen to this finisher sort of tell these meandering stories that seemingly have no end so how can a starter relax a little bit and just let a finisher be who they are, for example. Well, and I know I think, that's, a, I know that's a simple story, but also, you know, finishers too, understanding that starters have their own, you know, way of being and relax and realize that they're going to go fast paced and they're not going to be a finisher. Yeah. Putting time, time constraints on things is helpful. You know, like with the starter, you say, well, that's an amazing story. We have like five minutes left. So what what should we really, you know, glean from this? Where should we take this? Because like you said, the story goes on and on because their life does go on and on. And one thing with starters is they they are they are, they're just so good at, at taking you there, like where you can experience it. <laughs> I had an assistant one time. This is kind of funny. So she would go and we'd be in the same place at friend group. We would be in the same place. Later, she's a starter, right? So later, she would tell the story in front of us with other people, and it would be so amazing. My other friend would say, were we actually even there? <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm part of this story. And we just look well, because starters, you're really good at going all the way back to the beginning. Paint the picture. They're the great storytellers of life. And... Yeah, and so you you will have to put some time constraints on starters because they can just talk and talk and and without having an agenda and a time constraint, yeah, you you may not ever get anything accomplished. Yeah, well, I think finishers go on and on. That's my opinion. <laughs> it, it depends on the topic. Sometimes, sometimes, but I know we can't put people in extremely tight boxes. I know there's lots of overlaps for both starters and finishers. Um, so let's talk a little bit about People Logics and the mission of People Logics and how this book, um, as you said, it gives you the ability as a business owner with a big vision to introduce people to the idea of starters and finishers, and then provide additional support through your company. So let's share with me where you're at with that and what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do coaching and and we have a conference come up uh, at this setting that you're looking at this background. Every year we do a, a conference at the Hyatt Coconut Point at Bonita Springs. First Beautiful. Saturday of December, if you'd like to join us. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, we, of course, we do Zoom and and different trainings and you know our, our vision is very much global and so having messaging in a book and and um, with technology today you really can touch a lot of people in a lot of different demographics and so that's what we're doing we're just putting together a team that is is uh, definitely um, global, international, because human relations are everywhere. And I'm yet to talk to one person that says, no, we're, we're doing great at human relations around the world. <laughs> Things are fine. We don't need any more training of improving relationships. I'm yet to find that person. So, you know, everybody's in some sort of relationship. So I like working with the people that want to improve them. Everybody doesn't want to improve them. And, and, you know, we only work with people that are eager to have peace, love, joy, happiness, and improve their life and improve their relationships. And so we, we do that. Uh, one thing you can do is, like you said, your website, you can also email us and, and we can give you more information about conferences or training. Perfect. And I'm going to include all that in the show notes, but just so they can hear the website is peoplelogics.com, P-E-O-P-L-E-L-O-G-I-C-S.com. You can, Perfect. you can email support mm -hmm. at peoplelogics.com. Mm -hmm. Any questions you may have or want to connect? Love it. You know, so the, the thing that I think is so great about your vision and your message and the book and how it supports people logics is that it does good in the world. And that's really what attracted me the most when you came is that you see that 
what you have been given, the research that you and your dad have done, and how by having a book and having the supporting team and the conferences and things, you're doing the best you can to make the world a better, more peaceful, more loving place. And like, what could be a better mission than that? I really, I can't think of any, honestly, that's what gets me up out of bed in the morning is feeling like in some small way in my corner of the world, I'm helping people who want to make the world a better place. And you are a a shining example of that. Thank you so much. Yes, it is a passion. And that's, that's why I've committed myself to this and happy to interact with whoever that wants to be a part of that. So I encourage everyone listening to pick up this book if you're interested and willing to improve human relations. And if you're not, you probably shouldn't even listen to this podcast, frankly. But (laughs) the point (laughs) is, you know, to make the world a better place in whatever way you can, whether that's writing a book, whether that's serving someone with a smile, whether that's opening a door for somebody who needs help, you know, we all have our part to play in the world and making it a better place. And I'm so glad that you came to us. Um and gave us the opportunity to work with you to get your book, The Wonders of You, understanding your unique energy out into the world so that it can soar um, and teach people about how to be better, more tolerant, more loving, happier human beings. So what's what in, in the final moments here of our time together, um, would you like to share with anyone who may feel like, you know what, I have... I have some visions or I have some things that have been laid on my heart that I have been done. And I don't really know if I'm the person or if I have the right credentials or who am I to do that? You know, those are some of the common obstacles I think that authors face is we feel like, you know, I don't have a PhD, you know, I don't have a PhD in publishing. I don't know if there even is such a thing, but you know, it's talking yourself out of doing something that, you know, you can do should do, I hate to use the word should, but you get what I'm saying. Um, How would you coach someone up the ladder of confidence to taking action? I believe it starts with the concept and the idea and the belief and the understanding that you're here for a purpose. Mm -hmm. You're not here on accident. And so if there's a burning desire inside of you, just something that, 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 that keeps you up at night, there's something that ignites your flame, you, obviously that's your reason for being here like right now this is so fulfilling to me talking to you and just even the concept about empowering people to prosper in every area of life whatever it may be uh personally financially whatever it may be so as an inspiration is that you you know what when you feel alive that's probably your purpose and you probably don't want to look at it just from the profit side first. You probably want to look at your purpose. And like the one book says, do what you love and the money will follow. And, you know, your work is a significant part of your life. You know, at the, at the best, we're on the planet 100, 120 years and we're gone. So what are we here for? There, there must be a reason. And having an impact in the world and making the world a better place is something that you couldn't do through your art, through your music, through your writing, through your speaking, whatever it may be. But having this concept of love-based life is so important for you to find, you know, for people to find happiness and fulfillment and enjoyment out of life is, is, um, highly considered love-based life highly for, consider forget the past forgive yourself for everything and move forward today's a new day and i can make a difference like you said in your part of the world so um yeah you know um that burning desire is there for a reason and mm-hmm. that's why i'm talking to you right now i love it i love it and you know all of us together have our special unique talents our unique energy our unique contribution. And so, you know, it's not, I can't be who you are. Like I couldn't have brought this book in the world because that's not my knowledge. That's not my understanding, but I can facilitate helping someone do that. And I know that can be my role. And, you know, what is your role? Like you said, is it art? Is it music? Is it speaking? Is it, um, 
you know, just being a good human being, you know, more tolerant, more loving, more understanding. Um, and if every person could do that, oh my goodness, what a world we would have, right? Mm -hmm. So make sure that you grab this book, The Wonders of You by Nathaniel John Getz, his last name, G-O-E-T-Z. So you can find it anywhere books are sold online. You can go to peoplelogics.com and download some what do you have on your website currently? I haven't been there in the past little while. Well, one thing they can do is they can do a energy assessment. Yes, that's now, what it is. There's over 50 questions and they can find out for sure if they're a starter or finisher. Oh, they also, okay. They, yeah, they can leave, leave this podcast right now and go online and download the ebook in a matter of minutes. So mm -hmm. they can continue this conversation and, and get empowered like today. And so that that's amazing. And then the books can also be uh, delivered in a short period of time. We have hardback, softback, um, paperback and eBooks. And so that's on the website. You can contact us. You know, we're just we're just happy to serve and be a part of making the difference, making the world a better place. I love it. Well, thank you for being a part of our show today and spending your time with me. This has been such a lovely conversation, very empowering, very inspiring. And I'm sure not just for me, but for those who are listening and for everyone who is listening, I think the most important thing that Nathaniel just said is you can do it now because it's nice to think, yeah, that's pretty cool. Starter energy, finisher energy. I wonder what I am. Well, don't wonder go take the energy assessment and get the book and get information and start improving your human relations because then not only will you improve your world, but you'll be helping uh, Nathan really accomplish his vision as well. So thank you for being a part of this show today. Thank you for trusting us with your work and uh, allowing us to help you bring it into the world. It's our biggest honor to work with you and our, our other authors here at O'Leary Publishing. So thank you. And, uh, Thank you all for being a part and listening to another episode of the Iron Book Podcast. Take care, everyone. So this has been another episode of the Iron Book Podcast. I'm April O'Leary signing off. Be sure to hop on over to O'LearyPublishing.com to start your author adventure and see what writing a book could do for you in your profession, in your career, and what doors it might open. We thank our guests for being a part of the show today. And be sure to subscribe to podcasts here on YouTube. We look forward to serving you and helping you get your book out into the world.